Hi, this is Nana. In this video, I'd like to show you some of the other new features that you will be able to use in the new Prosper 202 as soon as you download and install it. Here I am on the login screen. The minor change that you're going to notice is that now you have the ability to turn off ads. So once that's turned off, you're not going to see any of the third party sponsored ads and content inside your Prosper. And that applies to also the login screen. So you can have that on or off. And I'll show you exactly where to do that further down in the video. The other change is that we have a new TV202 section here and also here. So we'll jump into that later. But for now, let's go into the main Prosper202 app. I'll switch to setup. This is where the first main uh, change you'll see um, will be. So over here, you see we have a variables feature. And the variables feature is not new, but one of the new features that has been added to the variables is the ability to map external variables to internal Prosper 202 variables. So what that means is that in, in this example, instead of using the C1 in your tracking link, you can use the variable called E and the value will also be stored into your C1 variable. And the same for W that will be stored into C2. Now you may be wondering why you would need something like this. And the reason for this is that sometimes you're working with a third party tool that has pre-built variables that it can accept, but you also want to be able to store the contents of those variables into your Prosper 202 uh, server. So for example, if your external system only allowed you to pass UTM variables onto your landing page, you could grab those UTM variables and store it into custom Prosper 202 variables as well. The next change you'll see is that we now have something called a default traffic source. And that is used for situations where there's a landing page and clicks come to it without any of the custom Prosper 202 tokens and variables that allow the system to know what kind of traffic source the uh, click came from. So for example, if you set up a landing page and clicks come in organically via SEO, you're usually not going to be able to have that assigned to any traffic source inside of Prosper. So now with the default option, you can create an organic traffic source and any traffic that comes into your landing page without the Prosper 202 tokens and IDs and the URL parameters will get stored as organic traffic. Next, I'd like to show you the new feature on the landing page setup. I have a separate video for this, but I want to highlight it in this video as well, is the leave behind. And this leave behind is a new feature that will automatically apply to any of your landing pages as, that you've pre-set up this allows you to generate extra revenue from the clicks that are generated on your landing page. So for example, you have a web page that's promoting offer A. Let me actually load up this one right here. So in this example, I'm sending people to Prosper 202. When someone clicks the link to go to Prosper 202, that will open up in a new browser window and will, that will be on the foreground. So the user will go to Prosper 202. But in the background, the window is going to redirect to this, which is an offer wall, which is a page full of other offers and uh, campaigns that I'm also promoting. When the user ends up closing out the main tab, they'll eventually see the tab with this page loaded. And as long as you've filled it with relevant offers, it increases your chances of having them click out to these other offers as well. If implemented correctly, Sometimes you're able to double or triple and even higher your revenue just by implementing this new feature. Next, let's look at the redirector. So this is the smart redirector, which you can use to intelligently route clicks as they're coming into Prosper. I'll pick up this one here. And what I want to highlight is some of the new filtering options that have been built into the redirector now. So you'll see down here, we have the visitor filter, and this will allow you to redirect unique visitors who are 
visitors that have seen the offer for the first time versus filtered visitors who are re-clicking the link. So for example, if you've noticed that a user has already clicked this link and you want to send them to another offer because they didn't convert, then you can automatically redirect them here. You can also filter by any of the C1 through C4 variables. So if you've set a value in your C1 and the user matches it, you can send them to different landing pages or offers. The same is true for the T202 keyword and the referrer. So for example, if traffic is coming from a specific page, you can redirect them to a specific offer. And finally, you can also redirect based off any of the values inside of your UTM variables. Next, we're able to use IP ranges. So instead of just typing in a single IP, you can use different IP range formats. And down here are the different ways that you can enter in an IP that uh, will be used to filter. So you can use a wildcard and all these other options here. Next, we'll uh, take a look at some of the admin settings and profile. So in the administration section, the new thing that you'll notice is the automatic database op optimization. And this will allow you to uh, trim your database size for Prosper uh, automatically. So for example, if you only want to keep 30 days worth of click data in your database, you put 30 in here and all the clicks over 30 days old will be wiped out from the database. So you type that in and then you just hit auto optimize and it'll clear out all the old data. Next, I want to show you some new settings on the campaign setup option. Now you're able to also set the currency of the offer. So if you're running international campaigns from another network that doesn't pay in US dollars, you can now enter in any of these currencies as the payout for the offer. So let's say you're running traffic in Australia and they're paying in uh, Australian dollars. So the payout is $4 and um, you're actually in the US, you're able to now store that inside of Prosper. And once you've got your default account currency set up, you'll be able to see your payout converted into US dollars in real time. And this uses a currency exchange service. So the exchange rate is going to be accurate as of the time the conversion happened. This is a very powerful feature and it's very useful for a lot of affiliates who are international. So you could set your, your home currency as non-US dollars and then the offer currency in US dollars and you'll be able to actually see your earnings based off your local currency. Here's the new TV202 section and this is a training section that will be filled with videos and tutorials and courses that you have access to based off your subscription. Starting out, everyone will have access to the Tollbooth system, and this is the training that teaches you how to uh, squeeze out maximum profits from your campaigns without changing anything else uh, in terms of ad spend or the amount of traffic that you're generating. And so all of these videos are here, and as new videos are released, they'll be placed in here automatically for you. And that's right here on the TV202. This is how you set up some of your other personal settings for your Prosper. For example, being able to set your account currency. Um, I have uh, US dollars say here, but you can set this to your local currency and that will allow you to see all your earnings, whether you generated them from a network based uh, elsewhere in your local currency. The other options, uh, remember I had ads turned off, so you can do that right here. So you can show all ads, you can hide ads on the, off, on the login screen, or you can hide all ads from both the login screen and inside of Prosper. The final thing I wanna show you is the pixel and uh, postback 
uh, page and this is where you grab all your pixels and post backs. We've simplified the layout so it's much easier to understand and then we've added a new transaction ID feature. Transaction IDs allow you to track multiple conversions to the same sub ID. So for example, you have your sub ID as one, two, three, four. You can either, that this is usually a dynamic value, but your transaction ID can be dynamic or hard coded. So for example, you can have a transaction of lead and this would be the pixel you would use for leads. And then if a sale happened, you'd have a transaction ID for sales. And then this would be your new pixel for sales. So you'd have two separate pixels tied to the same sub ID. It gets cool because each of these pixels can also have their payouts. So if a sale is worth $10, you could have that here and that will be saved inside of Prosper and maybe leads are only worth a dollar. And this would be the pixel that you would use that would set the amount for a dollar. The other thing is the ability to uh, deduplicate campaign uh, conversions. So that's right here. By default, that's turned off, but you can also Process duplicate sub IDs or ignore duplicate sub IDs. So when you when you have a duplicate sub ID, that's what the system has done uh, in the past. Where if a sale comes in for this sub ID uh, with a dollar, if uh, postback happened with the same information but the price changing to two dollars it's going to overwrite this value with a new value of two. So it's an easy way to update old data inside of your Prosper. But if you've got it to a point where you do not want to change anything once it's been set, then you do ignore duplicate. So if the first postback came in with a dollar and then a brand new postback comes in with a value of $2, this post back is going to be ignored because there's already a conversion for this sub ID and lead transaction ID combination. So you have the flexibility of running things the old way, which allows you to update your information with new values as they come in and overwrite whatever was in there, or to ignore it and use the first value that was set as the static value that never gets changed. So there you have it. Those were all the changes that I had time to show you in this video. There are tons of other changes that are not visible in the interface or in your workflow that are more behind the scenes that I can't show you. Once again, the update to version 1.9.43 and higher is paid and it's only a flat fee for the year. We give you the flexibility to decide whether you want to continue resubscribing and getting updates, or if you just want to pay one time and use the software for as long as uh, you want. To get the new Prosper 202, just visit prosper202.com and you should see links to read more about the software and also to purchase an upgrade and a license.